Yo, hello everyone and welcome back to Dividend Investor. I'm back today with another video in my uh, video series, Dividend Stock Analysis. And today I'll be going over the company 3M, ticker symbol, mmm. Yeah, mmm, that's a bit of a strange one, but anyway. Before we get into context of today's video, guys, if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. I'm on a goal to get to 1,500 subscribers. I need all the help I can get to reach that goal. Don't forget to get, stick a comment on this video, interact with it, get this video up, boost out to more people. And obviously, at the end of the video, if you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Yeah, that's how it works on this platform, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for the intro, guys. So, look at the key information about the company. You know how these videos go, and if you knew, I'll just go into a bit of information about the company. But look into the financial aspects of the company, the health. And also, ending off with the um, dividend yielding score. Out of, uh, 6 out of 6 score of the, the Simply Wall Street app. So yeah, um, obviously guys, uh, 3M on the New York Stock Exchange, founded back in 1902, Industrial Commodities, I can't even say that, that is a difficult word, in the capital goods sector, the market cap of $91.577 billion, and outstanding shares of $572.2 million. So that's just a bit, obviously they've got a website there, you can check out more, just a bit of basic information about them. So now we'll get into the health of the company. So 3M's finance, what is 3M's financial position? The analysis check, it gets a three out of six score. So you can see the financial position analysis. The assets outweigh the liabilities, that's always a good sign. So they've got more cash flow coming in than they've got debts or any sort of loans or other sort of things they've got to pay out, which is uh, $9.13 billion. As for the short term, then the long term, again, the assets still outweigh the liabilities. Not as much as a gap, but they still do outweigh them pretty, pretty closely. So 31.12 billion uh, long term assets coming in, so any sort of income. So obviously shareholders buying into them, and obviously, um, obviously other investments that get put into the company that counts as assets and always other ways. However they make money, basically. So you can see the short term liabilities uh, exceed the short term. Assets, sorry, exceed its short term liabilities. As I've said before, assets owned by a company which can be sold, converted to cash, or liquidated within one year. And liability, short term liabilities, commitments that's been made which are due within one year. So it's nice, now you can click on that, just have a little uh, brief of it. If obviously people don't know, and that explains it better than what I could, so I just read it off that. The blotch on it, the long term liabilities, the short term assets don't call long term liabilities. Well, that makes sense to be fair. Short term money won't be as long, as big as long term, so. As you can see in the, on the charts there, the assets long term definitely outweigh the liabilities of the long term. So as you can see, the debt to equity analysis, they've had, a lot, had more debt creep up in the last few years, which obviously I know has been a bit of a problem for them. They have quite a volatile share price as well. They have a 206% debt to equity ratio, I'll explain what that is in a moment. So the debt level... Um, 3M's debt to equity ratio is 220%, which is considered high. It says measures how much a company is financing its operations through debt versus wholly owned funds. So basically, basically they're just sort of, um, if they're lending money to sort of function, and they sort of run the day-to-day -day bits of the company. Reducing debt, the, equity, the debt to equity ratio has increased from 47% to 220% over the last three, five years. So that's not good of increase in debt, but debt coverage, the debt is well covered by operating cash flow and I've, I do think as long as the debt is covered by operating cash flow you, and they can know they can sustain the payments and the uh, interest payments, I think that's probably why they sort of go into a bit of debt. Obviously operating cash flow that looks to be at, 20%, at least 20% of the debt, obviously 32, um, 3M's um, cash flow is 32.2% of the debt, well, that's how much it covers. The interest payments on its debt are well covered by its EBIT. If you know what EBIT is, it's earnings before tax, uh, interest and taxes, which is 19.9% times coverage. So they look for an EBIT to be at least 5%, five times its interest payments, obviously. Um, 3M's interest payments is 1918 times more its coverage. So let's look at the balance sheets, which just says about their assets. Obviously, they've got quite a few assets, long-term assets, liabilities, receivables, cash and short-term investments, inventory, 
and physical assets. So they do have quite a lot of assets. So liabilities and equity, obviously the debt is, they do class some equity as bad equity, but obviously loans, loans and other debt, they're obviously all bad. So 22.5 billion debt. So you can see guys, they're, they're quite well covered. Uh, the operating cash flow is well covered. So let's get on to the dividend yield score now. My, uh, 3M's current dividend yield is real, reliability and sustainability. So as you can see, it's a 3.69% dividend yield and it gets a 5 out of 6 score on the Simply Wall Street app. Let's go into the points now. Its dividend yield of 3.69% is notably higher than the bottom 25% of dividend payers in the US market, which averaged at 1.66%. The only blotch on the scorecard is its dividend is low compared to the top 25 dividend payers in the US market, which have a 4.4% yield, which again, I've said before, it doesn't really matter. It's a good yield. We're more looking at um, if they do grow it, obviously if the company's growing as a whole share price and it's increasing its dividend. Its dividends per share have been stable in the past 10 years. That's always good. You know, you're not going to get any dividend cuts or any dividend complete cuts. Like some companies just will get rid of the dividend completely and it's not, it's literally, they don't even have to pay a dividend, it's just what companies just sort of do to pay the shareholders back. It's like a little thank you from them. Score number four, it's in dividend payments have increased over the past 10 years, which is good, good dividend growth, that's what you always want to see. You don't want a dividend to remain stagnant. It's nice that they're growing a small percentage each time. And score number five, it has a reasonable payout ratio of 67.2%. The dividend payments are covered by earnings. That's good, they're not going into any more debt trying to pay out the dividends. And then finally, score number six, future dividend coverage. 3M's dividend in three years is forecast to be covered by earnings. Again, that's really good with a 65.3% payout ratio. So yeah, that is the dividend yielding score for 3M, guys. What that is, it gets a five out of six score, so obviously it's really reliable. No, no sign of it cutting its dividend soon. Nice 3.69% solid yield. So yeah guys, that is um, pretty much it for today's video. Um, if you like this video, obviously don't forget to like it. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down if you want as well. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't um, affect me if you don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to criticism. <laughs> so I can always want to improve. But anyway, let me know if you own 3M or if you're thinking about buying 3M. Yeah, just engage guys. Anyway, enough of the rambling. I'm going to leave you to it there today. All the best. Take care.